Hello, everybody. Um, I thought I'd pull you guys in. I know I've been really, really busy, uh, so I haven't been able to do as many videos. But on this video, we are going to learn how to do this sort of muted, moody, with a couple pops of color into a crisscross style bouquet. And now the reason I'm picking a crisscross style bouquet for this one is that I just want it to be lighter. I want it to have a little bit more air, a little bit more room to breathe. Um, and so sometimes when you do the tap turn style or the spiral method, it, it can be quite heavy, um, which is okay because it, it produces this really perfect, gorgeous bouquet. But in this case, um, I want to just go ahead and try the crisscross with this style. So let me walk you through some of the flowers we have. They're just the most beautiful rose because they really are a blender rose, if you want to call them that. Because whenever you see several colors in a rose, you can call it a, or any flower, you can call it a blender rose, meaning this has a little bit of that yellowy orange. So when I bring in this orange flower, and then I also bring in, say, this coral flower, this coral charm, they blend. So it, it, it allows for a small bridge between those flowers, which you really want to have, okay? So I've got my blenders. I've got some pops of coral. I didn't use really big coral charms. I just used some small ones because I don't, Coral Charm Peony can really become, you know, sort of your, such a focal flower, and I just don't want that today, okay? So I, I wanted them to be here. I wanted these pops of coral. I'm gonna use a Steel Bee. In this case, this is Steel Bee's also giving me a little bit of a blend because it's moving white up into to peach, which I love. I've got some Freesia. Um, this Freesia, whenever you guys get your Freesia, mm, smells good pop off the um, the blooms that are no good, you're always gonna have some because they bloom on the way up. So it's not like something's wrong. If your freesia comes in with a, you know, sort of a shriveled piece at the bottom, don't stress about it. Just, you know, take it off, okay? Um, they have good bounce. Freesia are awesome, especially the doubles. Um, and this one really, it's pretty good. I'm gonna leave that. I've also got, um, I'm gonna pull my flowers out individually. And then um, for those of you who are um, getting this on video, I will put a recipe sheet so you'll be able to see that. This is White Majolica Spray Rose. One of my all-time favorite spray roses that's been around forever. Um, so this spray rose is really good because, A, it's got a lot of bounce and a lot of bend, which you can usually only get from a rose that you got out of the garden. Um, most roses have a really stiff hold. So for example, this is Cappuccino. And Cappuccino, has got just a super sort of stiff hold on it. So we've got Magilique with a lot of bounce. Magilique sometimes has a lot of pink in it. Love it. Whenever we're working with cappuccinos, I'm always open them up because um, I really want to see them look a little bit more like maybe a Coco Loco rose. So I open it up and I like to put in, um, I like to pull its center out. It's just some of the things that I like to do with roses. Again, this is how I do it. It doesn't have to be how you do it. Um, and if you have a better way, let me know, okay? Sorry for the traffic, but my shop has a street in front of it. So I like to come outside and work because it's prettier. So there you go, pretty Coco Loco imitator, cappuccino. So I've got a few of those. I'll probably pop them open as I work. The other garden rose I have uh, are the Juliet. I just did a couple of those. This particular bouquet is gonna have a lot of variety. Not one, the, if there's gonna be one movie star in this, it's gonna be this uh, this uh, romantic antique. This is something you can do. I don't, you don't see me do this a lot, but it does tend to fan the flowers a little bit nicer um, if you're working with antique uh, garden roses, because sometimes they don't really, you can't really reflex them the same. I have some beautiful, uh, burgundy or dark purple anemone love that i have some clematis which i love there should be a little more of that in there oh i have it there it is for my recipe oh look at this one look at this anemone so i don't know what you guys do in your shop but in my shop we get all our recipes together first day we condition all the flowers and we pull everything beautiful for bouquets so I have everything bucketed by the beginning of the week. This way, um, I don't have a, when the flowers came on Tuesday, uh-oh, I don't have such and such and I thought I had it. So when I pull everything for boutonnieres, corsages, all my flowers, prep them, 
I'm like, okay, I'm good to go. You know, I'll usually, centerpieces I have a little bit more uh, liberty with. Quicksand, love me a quicksand. Another, if you can see my shading here, I'm really trying to move from cappuccino up to quicksand, up to, here you go, look. See that? That's moving into three shades of cream. Three shades of cream. So I've got the cappuccino, quicksand, cream, magilique. It just kind of, it's just, it's stepping instead of, you know, sort of those shocky, when you do shocker bouquets, meaning you're just kind of like red and white. That's a perfect example of a shocker bouquet, is a red and white bouquet. Because it's, it's not that it's wrong, and I'm not trying to criticize a red and white bouquet, so don't get mad at me. But sometimes when I, I call it that because there's no bridge. So if I was doing, we're doing a red and white bouquet, since they want just red and white, look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. If you are doing a red and white bouquet, I'm gonna suggest that you use some kind of textures, maybe like a strancha or, you know, sorry, I live on a street, sorry about that. Um, a strancha or something like that where you can really, you know, use it to, to kind of blend the tones, you know, because there's light red is pink, you can't do that. I've got some hellebore, they're not the best right now, they're really green, um, you know, so I kind of set them out a little bit. I'll probably give them a little bit of a force opening it's not hellebore season but look how pretty they look when you kind of force them open a little bit so i'm definitely going to force these there you go there you go for those of you who have been asking me if uh, you want to learn from me uh, you want to come to design sanctuary workshop in dallas texas whoop, whoop. we have a great lineup of teachers um, lauren from be lovely Lauren Weinchop, she's planning on coming. Mandy from A Potted Pansy is going to be teaching. I'm going to be teaching. Um, we've also got Betsy from Dancing Daisies doing wearables. Uh, and we have Rochelle and Wendy from Details Dallas. They're gonna be teaching. So it's Dallas, Texas, November 4th through 6th. Tickets are available through the profile link on Design Sanctuary Workshop, okay? Uh, dot com. I think it's designsanctuary.com. And at Design Sanctuary uh, is the Instagram, at Design Sanctuary. Or you can go on my website and click over to uh, the Design Sanctuary link and you'll get more information. We will be posting our entire itinerary soon, but tickets are going. So if you're interested, make sure that you head over there. Just put in your first payment and that'll secure you a seat. I want to meet you. Okay, so here we go, Delphinium, my favorite. Love this. I just love these. Um, these two are gonna end up in a boutonniere. So just always pull your little guys off, put them aside. Um, I think I talked to you guys before. When I'm doing a bouquet, I don't always wanna see this. I'm not sure if I wanna see it this time, but probably not. I'm probably gonna pull that tip off. All right, I think I'm just about ready to start. Oh, the other thing I have is mint or a menta. The reason I get this is because sometimes um, it's a little, got a little more flap than lavender. Um, and a little prettier sort of sage uh, color. So I can use both lavender and um, mint in these. Uh, this girl wanted that tone. I've also got some really pretty uh, burgundy foliage from my garden. That's gonna make a huge difference. I've got some sweet pea. I've got some um, privet, which is gonna be an amazing scent. So let's get started, let's get started. All right, so since we're starting on the outside, I can actually start with some length here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a little bit of length. Um, I like that look, so that's gonna be my frame on this side. When I'm doing a crisscross, I'm gonna grab it like that, okay? Right under my index card, finger. That's what I do, okay? Again, I, I like to say that's what I do because I don't want you to feel like that's what you need to do. Okay? Then I'm gonna go like that. So now I have a nice crisscross ready to start sort of my beginning of my amateur amateur my armature if you want to know what we mean by armature we mean um, it's sort of this framework or grid that you can work through and there are lots of ways to get an armature or have an armature um, but that is the grid that you're going to work with okay so right now I'm going to go ahead and wrap it off so I'm gonna flip it upside down, that's how I do it. I'm just gonna tie it off and now I've already started with my grid, okay? I'm not gonna lock my grid in quite this early. 
So the opposite thing we're doing with this style bouquet than what we would do with a crisscross or a uh, tap turn is that we're going to start with our lateral flowers. And already as I start this, I'm pretty sure I don't want this point, but I'll leave it on just for a little bit, okay? When I make bouquets, not when everybody makes bouquets, but when I make bouquets, I don't love seeing delphinium on both sides of a bouquet, for example. I like to see delphinium on one side and then maybe I'll use uh, you know, some of this on the other side. This is uh, oak leaf hydrangea that we have. Pam, can you grab me some twine bind wire? Sure thing. Thank you. Um, I have this privet, I'm gonna use that. So now I'm just looking for my laterals and I'm keeping my crisscross, see? It's very simple, it's not hard. It's just a different style and everybody does it differently. You do not have to do it like me and you probably don't. But so don't stress about it. If, it. if you get, you know, the goal is to get the same outcome or the bouquet that, to look the way you want it to look. And if it looks the way you want it to look, then, then you've solved your problem, right? You've gotten what you want. So just, you know, don't stress about it. But there are some techniques that'll make it easier for you to do it, okay? Okay, I'll use two different colors. Thank you. I'll just take that one right there. Show people the right way to take it out and there the you wrong go. way. I'll show them the right way. So I use pine wire a lot. Thank you, Pam. I use bind wire a lot because I love it um, because it's just, it kind of, as I'm using it, it's not gonna mess up my stuff. All right, so let's start with some, some really pretty flowers on the exterior. Remember, dark flowers move in. You say, why do I need to know that? Well, because if you want the bouquet to have uh, a lot of dimension, you wanna make sure that you're putting things on the outside that belong on the outside. I'm still working my crisscross. I'm keeping my fingers in the center of that crisscross. Eventually, I'm not gonna have to keep it that way. As it builds in, it's gonna get heavy and I can just start holding it, it's like a regular bouquet right in its center. But right now, that's not what I want. I'm gonna work back and forth in my crisscross. This is how I do it. Again, you don't have to do it that way. I'm gonna work like that, always considering that I want to see these flowers. I don't want them disappearing on me. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in this guy. I'm gonna work it in. I'm gonna pull this one in. And remember, if you've got a good hold on your flowers, you don't have to worry that you're going to um, run out of, like you're gonna lock in your bouquet. You don't wanna lock your bouquet in. Once you start locking your bouquet in, meaning once you tie up too tight, or once you start crisscrossing your flowers incorrectly, your, your stems are gonna lock. And then you're not gonna be able to do this, which is all I wanna do the whole time I design, okay? So now every once in a while, if you like where you are, just take your bind wire, your twine, your clear tape, your uh, flower tape, whatever you like, wrap it around, okay? Wrap it around. So I tried posting my live videos, it's not working so well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up really well. You guys can catch it with rice, can, can get it if you want it. All right, so see how I have a coral flower on this side? Now I want a coral flower on this side, okay? Because I like the idea of using two different coral flower, flowers. And I'm now kind of just letting my crisscross spin around. I'm going to use another one of these because I have one. Remember how many times I tell you guys never put things at the same level, especially the same flower at the same level, if you can help it. Sometimes you can't help it. So then I have this really, this is such a pretty rose. It's actually sort of orange, but right now it's looking really, really yellow, almost like a combo, but I love it. I wanna keep it in there. I'm gonna put it right here toward the center. I'm almost ready to pull this into one and then start feeding. It's amazing how few flowers you can use for this style. Now I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna lay that in there. I'm gonna bring some mint in. It's time for a texture. It's a real simple style. But as I get to the center is where I'm gonna start really working it to try to get this bouquet to have a really good flow. So you see I'm starting to move it out a little bit here and always remember foliages, okay? Now, something like this, mint or um, astrantia or a steel bee, you don't have to do that, what I said about one side on that. You can go ahead and sort of incorporate throughout. It's not a focal flower um, and it's not gonna draw a ton of attention, but it's definitely gonna be, I call it like sort of, um, you know, the uh, 
supporting actor in the bouquet uh, because what it's going to do is create uh, it's going to make everything else look super pretty i love juliet i don't like the sides of a juliet that much i just feel like they're the side the fronts of them are so pretty but the sides i don't love so sometimes when i'm working with a juliet i might uh opt to see what i did there so can you see my hand just like that um it's starting to work in still big gap in the center okay so this is a uh, called burning bush i know there's a really uh, famous like word you're supposed to use for it i love this greenery you're going to see it a lot in the summer in my bouquets it's hardy it lasts it's a lot like huck um, it's got a little bit of a looser stem than huck but it's readily available um, to forage ha 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 so i do grow it um, but sometimes i need more than what i grow and I can usually find it pretty much anywhere. All right, so I have a really good armature here. Now I've got a good, I can start building my bouquet up. I'm gonna tie it off again, because I'm ready. Remember what I told you guys about your curves? You always wanna be working things up, 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 just like that. Anybody have any questions? Do you hear see any questions? Okay, good. Nope, we like the colors though. Good, I'm glad you like the colors. And I did tell you guys that I would answer your questions if you, uh, put them on there. I have like three or four people that I am getting ready to e uh, DM back that I looked at my live from last week that you asked me a few questions. So don't be afraid to ask questions or comment on here. If I can't see you, it's okay. I will get back to you. All right. So I love this uh, burning bush because it's going to give me the support that I need. So what I want to tell you that I'm going to do right now, this is just sort of my habit and my way is I want to turn this because I want to see the other side because look what's happening on this side but yet look what's happening on this side so my famous saying in my shop if you work here is make sure you're getting all the sides of your bouquet to look the way that you want them to look because if you're not um, it's going to show later okay it, it's going to look like a one-sided bouquet and some people don't care if you, they have a one-sided bouquet but I really do I don't want one um, I like to see my flowers uh, I like to see my bouquets from two sides. So there you go. All right, whenever your foliage is exceeding your bouquet, it, sometimes that's really good and sometimes it's really not good, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and bring, now what I wanna do now is I really wanna see this guy like deep, okay? Well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna put one out here for now. Now I have some freedom. I like it out there and then I'll bring another one in deep. Um, I want this so this will be sort of my side of my bouquet because when you're working you don't want to just work on top where that shot you want to work on the side so you get that shot that's important i also realize that i say important like 900 million times and i'm sorry for that you know i'm not a actress i'm a florist so clematis love this this is sort of an after flower it gives you a really pretty you know, peak of tone. By the way, I think this is Marissa's bouquet this week, isn't it? Yeah, this is Marissa. So Marissa, if you're watching, this is your bouquet and it's fabulous. Whenever you use outdoor foliage, make sure you clean it up because there's always a few really good leaves and a few not so really good leaves. I love this already though, by the way. All right, so let me show you what I don't like. I didn't like that when I looked in here, I could see um, I couldn't see my florals. Even though I don't mind stuff kind of peeking out or peeking over, I always want to come back through and make sure that I'm letting stuff breathe. I just don't want it to feel so tight, okay, that you're kind of like, where's the flowers, all right? So I'm going in. Time for this guy. I already put one of these on this side, so let's bring that in like that. See, now I'm working out this side of it. I'm going to bring that way in. And I want to start working on my drama, my drama. So I'm going to pull, I have a nice blank spot for this. Now I've got my armature. Now I can build through wherever I want um, and just feed my florals through so that they do what I want them to do. And I definitely want them to dance as per my friend, Sarah. I haven't talked to Sarah in a while. She must be busy doing weddings. My friend, Sarah from uh, 
the little shed. I miss her. I love her. All right, I'm putting this one up through the top. And what's great about this clematis, okay, these are wonderful dancing flowers. So look at the gap that's right between your roses, you know, and put it there because it's not going to cover the rose, but it's definitely going to give us some of that dance that we're looking for and not really affect our recess in the center, which is important too. So I'm going to bring this through. I really feel like I want one of these deep inside. Sorry, I got bees, bees, bees. There you go. Well Springs Floral would like to know, did the bride specifically ask for the crisscross style bouquet? No, she or doesn't know. you make the decision based yeah, on the inspiration? Yeah, I based on the inspiration, Well Spring, and here's why, because she would never know how to ask for a technique. You know, that's not, she would never even know to do that. Um, so, no. But, I did it based on the style that she brought to me. It's going to work better with this, you know, this sort of crisscross style. So that's why um, I picked it. It's a good question, though. They don't ever know what they're asking for. They just kind of bring a picture. I mean, unless they're florists, they're going to bring me a picture. They're going to say, you know, I really love this. Can you make this bouquet? That's where your expertise comes in um, to know the difference. And again, it's not, you know, necessary that you know how to do a crisscross style but i do encourage you to learn more styles all right it's it took me i'm 30 years into this or i'm 31 and i learn every day like i mean last week i was studying somebody's bouquet like how'd they do that and what did they do and i still make the bouquet and it doesn't look right and i knock it down i'm like i don't understand you know because you guys it, these styles are changing every single week I feel like, I mean, I know that's an exaggeration, but honestly, what I was doing last year at this same exact time, I'm not doing right now. It is not the style. So, you know, you got to keep your eye open. Don't be insulted. Not a big deal if you can't do it. Just figure it out. Learn, ask, talk. I have a girl in here right now working with us who is a amazing florist. No, she doesn't have any big Instagram. She's not she doesn't even care about Instagram, honestly. Uh, not a little, not a little, not a lot. I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. I'm moving this because I didn't like that I had these on this side and this side. So I really want to bring um, this into the other way because I can see it myself. But I'd rather it be there. I'd rather my stairs. One, two, three. Remember, you're, sometimes your clematis is gonna break, and if it does, put it back in. Up, oh, these clematis are all breaking on me. Let's try this one. Clematis is, uh, I grow it. I have some much prettier clematis growing in my yard. I should be using that. But I buy it from the Holland Market constantly. So, so bind wire is good because it does get all over the place, but you can pull it from the center, which is very nice. So I'm really happy with this bouquet right now. So let's get back to the part that I told you um, earlier. Remember how I always turn it upside down and relax my thumb? Don't be sweating, girls. Let's clip off some bottom work because if I do, it's going to make everything easier. I think it's like having a sun shower. Is it raining? Ooh. Okay, look at this. This is really pretty. It's got a great bounce. Really happy with it. Um, but. I don't want this. I don't like the way it's going this way. And because I know that later on it's going to do that even more, I'm going to get rid of this. Just the tip right to here because I don't want it to droop. Delphinium does very well and then, you know, but that's better. It feels more bright to me. Okay. All right. So now when I look at this, I feel like that's bothering me. When you guys are looking at your bouquets, if it's bugging you, just cut it out. You're like, oh no, what if I cut something that's, you know, I need? Well, go get another one. No big deal, okay? Um, now I'm ready for a little more, a little more drama. So see that? Now I'm ready because I now I really want that to happen. Sometimes on my hellebore, I don't want the leaves, but I really want the flower. I pinch them off with my fingers. Um, that works just great. Now see how that, look how good that is. I even think wider is better because it's really going to give me that distance. That's a piece of privet. Love it. 
going to cut it back down like that, I think, to the little floral. I don't want them to really see. I love that. So pretty. So at the end of this, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to tie it off. I do have flowers left. Um, so what I think I'm going to do now is just bring a couple into this deeper part right here. Just want to see something underneath. Just like if I were doing a centerpiece, all right? If I were to put that into a container, I would want to make sure that you could see from both sides, all right? So the other thing I can do underneath here now is another piece of delphinium. Now I'm just working my underside, all right? I know I talk about that a lot, but I think it's so important to have the underside of your bouquet really done and finished. It's, look, when she turns it this way, look what you see, it's better, okay? Let's put in a couple more of these anemone because they're super pretty. Listen, the other thing I want to tell you is to make sure that you make a workspace that you like. And you might say, well, I can't afford it. You know, I built my workspace for not that much money. I mean, I, I really did. I got barnwood on sale at the time on Craigslist. And, you know, I just, just made it the way I liked it. Because for me, environment's really important. And I know it's true for most creatives. You know, turn your space into a place you want to be in because you are gonna spend a lot of time there and you wanna make sure that you make it functional too. All right, love anemone the way it turns. It's a great turner. And the reason that I can relax right now and put my flowers in the way I want to is because I keep tying off. And when I do these lives, I find myself tie off a lot because it just gives me time to talk and to stop and to relax and to look and see if it's doing what I want it to do. So that's one of the reasons I do tie off a lot when I'm doing a live. I used to never tie off. I just make the whole bouquet because you can do it really fast. So this is really beautiful. I'm so excited about it. Really pretty, really pretty. You know, so probably what I'm going to do right now is get rid of that. I feel like it's just overwhelming. You know, it's cleanup time. I like this rose in the center but I think I want some of that curl out of it. See that? So I just, when I want a rose to look more gardeny, I rip the middle out of it. I like that, okay? So there you go. She's done. She's beautiful. I see a hole right here. So I'm gonna fix that hole. Right there, look at that. What a difference a rose makes. Isn't that nice? Made a huge difference. Okay, then I'm gonna clean this up. I don't like the way that is. I don't mind seeing some green, but I feel like it's taking over. So I'm going to take that out. I'd rather see a piece of a steel be in there or some kind of texture coming out because I want something to peek out and over, but uh, I don't know if it's that either. Oh, sweet pea. That's the answer. See? All right. I'm going to say goodbye. I will try to post a picture of this one. Um, for you guys to see but just so you know sweet pea is a great it's a great friendly forward flower okay and it does a really good forward movement for you if you don't like where your flowers are get rid of them I don't like a lot of green up in the forefront of the bouquet because I feel like it gets rid of the focal point so um, you'll always see me reworking 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 and because when I tie off I don't tie off hard meaning I don't tie off to the point of not being able to manipulate my flowers, I can take things out, I can move them really easily because I didn't over, uh, I didn't overwork it, all right? So that's another really important point. Um, you know, you don't want to overdo your tie off. Okay, thank you everyone for watching. Please leave your messages. You can DM me, um, watch it live for 24 and then keep your eye out. I will start showing you how you can get these with recipes and everything else uh, pretty soon. All right. Thank you so much. Bind wire? Yes. Bind wire. Want to see it? There it is. It's called Oasis Bind Wire. Your wholesaler will have this. All right. Anybody want to know anything else before we say goodbye? That's it. Just lots of love. I love you guys so much. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch these crazy videos. <laughs> All right. Bye. Later.